they need to have the whole SD card plugged into the data logger. So we were, we're very aware of this. So every one of your data logger kits has a remote SD card. So you can plug this in to the, this um, reader, which does not allow you to bring that all the way into the SD card slot. So this cover prevent it from plugging into your laptop directly because um, it won't allow it to go in all the way, thus it won't allow you to read. So we provide you this reader. So I highly advise that you use this reader. No, it does not. This USB port will be used on any port on your laptop. It does not matter at all. So, I plugged in the SD card to my laptop to download the run. Again, just to remember, all the files are stored on this SD card on the data logging systems. So, you come back to the pits, you made your pass. To download the run, you click on File, and you can select New Download, or on your toolbar on the left hand side, the very first button is our download button. A little green little page looking thing there. That's a little quick deal for you just to click. Since I've already defaulted my config earlier, it's automatically going to go right to the open file. The guys that have multiple data loggers on one laptop, it will ask you to select the configuration or the unit that you're using. In this case here, I'm just using the one. I've already defaulted it so it automatically knows. Now when you first plug this in, if you look up here at the top where it says look in, it's already selected to the RacePack SD card. We name the SD card for you. So when you open it up, it should automatically come here. If it does not, you just hit this button right here. Say, for instance, you first open it up and it's pointing to your C drive and you don't see the race pack SD. Not a big deal. Just come over here where it says look in, hit the drop down arrow, and select the race pack SD card. Now, right here is five recordings. So, what this is, is each time the data logger takes a recording, it writes a file. We just name them here, one, two, three, four. Every time it takes a write to file, we increment the numbers for you. We also do a time and date stamp for you. So here, this is me setting it up the, earlier in the month here on the December 12th. And this is me today just messing around with it. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna select the latest file because that is the very latest recording. So the highest number on your SD card will always be the very latest recording. And basically, I'm gonna select that file on the SD card and I'm gonna click on open. We, we can rename the files if we like. I'm gonna cover that in a second. Right now, this is just how the data logger writes it to the SD card. So I'm just essentially opening that file. So right now I'm going to hit open and now I'm going to get to this window right here. So majority of you with our data loggers will always get this window. Some of them will be different configurations for the IQ3s or the G2Xs, uh, but it's basic same scenario you're going to get. Now this is now a little bit how we name our files, which I'm going to cover here in a minute, and for your record keepings. So right here I'm going to select, since it's not in the list, 2016, but if it was in the list, I would just select it in here. The track, I'm just going to say Indy. The date's going to be already filled out from you. It's going to pull the time and date from the SD card. So you'll have an accurate representation of when this file was recorded. Say like I went home that day and three days later I decided to upload that data because I didn't do it at the track. Um, it'll still have the correct time and date for you. So I'm going to select that. And then judging by the type of data logger you have, we'll have different selections for you. Um, if it was a warm-up um, qualification, elimination, if you're tractor pulling, it would be um, a different uh, um, 
selections for tractor pulling, so forth and so on, or if you're road racing, it'll run one, run two, stuff like that. In this case here, we'll say this is eliminations, and this is the fourth round. So I've got the year selected, I've got the track where I'm at, the date and time. This is again the software record keeping and the file name structure. I hit next. Now for a drag racer, I can fill out my lapse time, what line, or excuse me, lane I was in, um, any comments I have to write down, and then we hit OK. And then right here, be carefully look, the guys in the back, I'll try to read it for you. This is how we name the files. You guys are more than welcome to change the name to anything you would like to do. But I just want to explain the way we do it. So the first part of it says V3. We do this on purpose because there's a lot of you guys out there that have many different data loggers. So we're going to tell you this is a V300 just by the V3. The next part of the file name is IND. That's abbreviated of the track that you selected in that list. So in this case, this would be Indy. The next part of this is the date. So you know what day it was when this file was recorded. So in this case here, this is 12-10-2016. The next part of that was what run was it? I selected an eliminations round four, so it's gonna follow by E4. If you don't like that, by all means, change it. But that's how we do it, we're basically out race pack. So we include the date, the track, what round it was, and what type of um, racing it was, the qualifications, elimination, so forth and so on. Um, track to pool, road race, we do complement that in um, the, those better uh, applications. So at that point, I'm gonna leave this structure alone. I'm gonna hit save. And now it's going to open the run. So you'll notice that the file names at the top are tabbed. The blue wrench indicates this is the configuration setup file. This is not a run. That's just your setup file. This tab right here with the, with the save disk on it, the little blue disk, that indicates a run, a recording. So anytime you're looking at the different tabs at the top, all your recordings, if you have multiple files open, are indicated by the file name and the blue disk. So at that point now, I can just start selecting channels. So the way this works is, up at the top of the pane here, this is all the channels of all the sensors you have listed. Now, when I select them, it signs it a color. So if I select clutch RPM, it signs it blue. And then it will be graphing down below. So I'm going to show you an example. Oops, excuse me. So here is um, like shock position. So if I click on that, it signed it red and it graphs it up at the top. My apologies, there's a little too bright to see this. So a lot of you guys covered or talked about a little bit um, may start your recording off a button or it may start your recording off of um, RPM so you don't even have to touch the button you just as soon as the motor fires goes right in record mode a lot of my tractor pull guys do that a lot of my land speed and a lot of my drag racers do that so essentially what you would want to do at this point when you first open your run it's only going to show you the first preset amount of seconds that the program has been told to show at the beginning. That basically right now is basically from zero seconds at, at the bottom to the far right horizontally below the graph is time. It's always time. It's nothing other than time. So right now this program is defaulted to show the first 10 seconds as soon as you open up any file. So I want to get to the run. So this thing is obviously fired up. It's recording right now, but I want to get to the run. So now we're going to show you some buttons on the toolbar here. So those do are on the toolbar on the left-hand side, there's those arrow buttons. You got shift right, shift left, right above that. I can click these to move over back and forth. But I want to give you guys a better tool. 
right above this, this is probably the most tool, overlooked tool to save you about a minute here. If you just use this button right here. So right below the magnifying glasses or the buttons there, there's this button right here. It has an arrow to the left and right of it. It's called auto scale. What this is, is when you first initially download your run, you click this button right here and it zooms out completely. That way you're not spending a minute hitting the arrow button trying to get over to the run, especially if you start your recording by RPM. Yes? Oh, sorry. So right now I zoomed out completely. Now I see the run. I'm going to place the cursor right where I think the run is approximately and I'm going to zoom in using the zoom button. Now I'm getting the run into the window that I want it to be in. So the next step after you first download your run, this is going to be for a drag racer um, majority of the time, is I want to set my zero point. If you notice at 40 seconds into the run the time is located in here in the top left of the graph window is where the run begin. My next step is now to zero the time there at the beginning of the run. So I'm going to do this by two ways. Anybody that leaves off the trans break and we monitor it, you can use the trans break as your zero point. So as soon as you let off the button, you're going to see the trans break go away um, on the graph there, and you can set the zero right at that point. For those that don't leave off a trans break, your best bet is to use G meter. So if you see right here, uh, sorry, it's too, is that a little bit better? You can see the engine RPM very carefully if you look, it starts to ramp up and then at the same time the G meter ramps up. I want you to do that over drive shaft. Drive shaft RPM takes a couple of pulses from the collar, the magnets, for it to be able to start getting a frequency of signal to calculate RPM. If you choose to do that, I want you to know the drive shaft is already in motion before you tell it this is the start of the run. If you use the G meter, this is where the, actually the car starts to move. I'd rather have you use that because that would be more consistent than the drive shaft would. So I, yes sir. Why would you, I always use the G meter, but why would you use the, the release off the trans brake? What would be the benefit? It's a consistent start. Okay. Anytime you let go, that's consistent because what happens is if you don't do a consistent start and you go to overlay multiple runs on top of each other, there always will be shifted back and forth. So, yes sir. Also just to, on that, if you use your, off of the trans brake, you can also with your drive shaft collar see how much roll up you have in the vehicle before everything starts to move. So how do you set it on the trans brake? Well, how do you find zero on the trans brake? Okay, basically, I don't have it in this example of the run, but it will be a line coming across when the trans brake is activated. It will come across like this, and then as soon as you let go, it will go back to zero. That would be your point to be, okay, that's when I release the trans brake. That's where I'm going to zero the run. When I go zero all my runs, I come back and overlay it. They're dead nuts on each other at the start point. I'm sorry? How do you hook it up? We have inputs that you can buy that will look at your trans brake solenoid. That will show you on and off. So, Sportsman, you can use 12 volt. Sportsman comes with it, absolutely. We give you that channel in there. It also shows the difference in delay on your dead delay boxes. So, if you leave and you have, say, you got 30 thou on your delay, and you think, oh man, like, I nailed the tree and I don't think my delay box is right. Sometimes those short out. Sometimes those short out, it will actually. You can see, oh man, okay, my delay box is actually working. So you, it's kind of a, <laughs> it's a you, not the box. It's exactly. A, it's, a, it's a good validation, basically. You can see whether a person had a delay box in there. Oh, sure, absolutely, because the G meter didn't move until uh, 10th or 2 later, and that's what's in your delay box, you would know. Like it'll show if you're, if you're leaving on the top bulb and you have your 1.1 and then your delay, that's going to show on the graph when you leave on the top so that, you know, your drive shaft is going to be, you know, a second later. 
So I just kind of remember that. That'd be as long as you wire it into the button itself, not into the trans breakdown on the bottom of how you transition. Right, right, right. You know, right, right. Yeah, if you do the button, is one thing before the delay, or you do it at the trans break, it will give you two different readings, obviously. Yes, sir. Uh, NHRA, it, that is correct, it is not legal, uh, but other, like, uh, other organizations, it is very, very legal. Uh, you do need to verify what is legal and not legal. Now, I'll tell you what is legal, though, you could um, uh, look at it through the power grid and stuff like that, because there's no extra wires connected to it. You're seeing when the power grid got the signal to go on and off. Sure, because we can stream data from the power grid when it's solid, it's two-step on and off. Since we're not connecting anything per the rules on NHRA, you can't connect anything to it, then you can actually stream the power grid data when you go on and off. And you're, you're talking about the grid. Yes, correct. Yeah, the MSD power grid. Yes, that is an alternative too. If you do run NHRA, you can stream that over. But that's only with the grid you can do that. You can't do it with a digital. Right, that is correct, because you would actually physically have to hook something to it. Now, again, you want to check with your NHRA tech official because there are ways around it because, like I said, they don't want anything hooked to the transfer.